Hello Booktube, uh, this is by Pride TBR. Um, first up is A Queer History of the United States by Michael Bronsky. Um, a Queer History of the United States is more than a who's who of queer history. It is a book that radically challenges how we understand American history. Drawing upon primary source documents, literature and cultural histories, scholar and activist Michael Bronsky charts the breadth of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender history from 1492 to the 1990s. And I am quite looking forward to this book. Um, I do have a strong interest in gay history or queer history or however you want to term it. So I'm quite happy to have this and finally get around to reading it. Uh, next we have, um, or I have, uh, three uh, short novels, although two of them are considered novellas, and I'm not entirely sure why. So, first up is uh, Lie With Me by Philip Besson and translated by Molly Ringwald. Um, I'll haul this um, last Friday. Uh, just outside a hotel in Bordeaux, Philippe chances upon a young man who bears a striking resemblance to his first love. What follows is a look back at the relationship he's never forgotten, a hidden affair with a boy named Thomas. During their last year of high school, Thomas is the son of a farmer, Philippe the son of a school principal. At school, they don't acknowledge each other, but they steal time to meet in secret, carrying on a passionate, world-altering affair. Despite the intensity of their attraction, from the beginning Thomas knows how it will end. Because you will leave and we will stay, he says. Philippe becomes a writer and travels the world, though he never lets go of the relationship that shaped him and every story he's ever told. So, definitely sounds interesting, and I am quite looking forward to it. Next, we have um, The Black Tides of Heaven by J.Y. Gang. Um, this book came out in, I think, 2017 and was part of a sort of a dual release with... Um, Red Threads of Fortune, I think. Um, Mokoya and Akeha, the twin children of the Protector, were sold to the Grand Monastery as infants. While Mokoya developed a strange prophetic gift, Akeha has, was always the one who could see the strings that moved adults to action. While Mokoya received visions of what would be, Akeha realized what could be. What's more, they saw the sickness at the heart of their mother's protectorate. A rebellion is growing. The machinists discover new levers to move the world every day while the tensors fight to put them down and preserve the power of the state. Unwilling to continue as a pawn in their mother's twisted schemes, Akeha leaves the tensorate behind and falls in with the rebels. But every step Akeha takes toward the machinists is a step away from Mokoya. Can Akeha find peace without shattering the bond they share with their twin. So I read this uh, late in 2017 and I was rather ambivalent about it at the time. I thought, while well, the ideas were pretty good, the execution left much to be desired, but I am looking forward to giving um, Black Tides of Heaven and the rest of the books in the series another go. And we have the third of the uh, short novels, um, Kaya Shante Wilson's The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps. Since leaving his homeland, the earthbound demigod Demane has been labeled a sorcerer. With his ancestor's artifacts in hand, the sorcerer follows the captain, a beautiful man with song for a voice and hair that drinks the sunlight. The two of them are the descendants of the gods who abandoned the earth for heaven, and they will need all the gifts those divine ancestors left to them to keep their caravan brothers alive. The one safe road between the northern oasis and southern kingdom is stalked by a necromantic terror. Demane may have to master his wild powers and trade humanity for godhood if he is to keep his brothers and his beloved captain alive. Um, so I read this somewhat towards the end of uh, 2017 and really enjoyed it um, 
and I'm looking forward to coming back to The Sorcerer of the Wild Beasts. Next is a book that I haven't read before, um, being spoken named by A.K. Larkwood. What if you knew how and when you will die? Kusore does. She will climb the mountain, enter the shrine of the unspoken, and gain the most honored title, sacrifice. But on the day of her foretold death, a powerful mage offers her a new fate. Leave with him and live. Turn away from her destiny and her god to become a thief, a spy, an assassin, the wizard's loyal sword. Top on an empire and help him reclaim his seat of power. But Sawore will soon learn God's remember, and if you live long enough, all debts come due. Um, yeah, sounds very interesting. Um, yeah. So, looking forward to finally getting around to this one, or reading the, uh, the unspoken name. Next, we have um, another book that I haven't read yet, and this one is well, well past due. Um, I've had this book for at least 15 years, probably a bit longer. Uh, Boulevard by Jim Grimsley. The year is 1976, and Noel has just moved to New Orleans. His good nature, good looks, and dancing and daring stunt in a popular bar make him a fast favorite in the French Quarter, as he is lured into the gay subculture of the late 1970s and into the mad abandon of the city's bar scene. Newell must figure out whom to trust. His life will depend on it. In this fierce, poetic, and heartbreaking tale, Grimsley shows us what can happen when one's wildest dreams are fulfilled. Um, so I've never read Boulevard, and I've had it uh for quite some time um i have read um dream boy by jim grimsley and quite liked it i really need to revisit that one too and i've read uh kiris kieran his uh fantasy novel which uh yeah pretty much has the problem any uh realistic or literary writer who suddenly decides to start writing fantasy or science fiction tends to have which is that their writing skills seem to exit and they really end up being a lot of cliches and basically it's like every other fantasy novel you've ever read. Anyway, um, next we have the Tiger's, uh, the Tiger's Doddle. The Tiger's Daughter by K. Arsenault Rivera. Um, so I've talked about this book quite a few, quite a bit lately. Um, I've read it twice. Um, I'm, I have a lot of issues with the book and I want to use this uh, reread to really sort of settle those issues. Uh, a poison spreads across an ancient land. The Hokaran Empire has conquered every land within their bold reach, using the combination of imperial might and sabotage to devastate and subjugate the nomadic Hokaran tribes. Generations later, the decaying imperial line has led to rampant corruption and ruined fields. And worst of all, the demons once kept at bay by the Hokaran Emperor have taken advantage of the crumbling protection of border walls and have begun to overrun villages and forests. But against all odds, a destined pair of warriors rise from the ashes, and last, the last hope of a desert, devastated people and a fractured nation. This is the story of Barsalaya, Shefali, and Oshizuka, who are unafraid to face the demons. They will save their world and become legends, or they will die trying. And honestly, that was not what the book is about. Um, at all. Um, I, so, yeah. Anyway, I kind of have to question the synopsis on that one. <clears throat> anyway, 
but I am looking forward to going back to the Tiger's Daughter. Uh, next is um, Hero by Perry Moore. Um, this is a uh, superhero novel. So let me read the back. The last thing in the world Tom Creed wants is to add to his dad Hal's pain. So he keeps secrets, like that he has special powers, and that he's been asked to join the League, the very organization of superheroes that spurned his father. The most painful secret of all is when Tom can barely face himself. He's gay. But becoming a member of the League opens up a new world to Tom. There he connects with a misfit group of aspiring heroes, including Scarlet, who can control fire but not her anger, Typhoid Larry, who can make anyone sick with his touch, and Ruth, a wise old broad who can see the future. Like Tom, these heroes have things to hide, but they will have to learn to trust one another when they uncover a deadly conspiracy within the League. To survive, Tom will face challenges he never imagined. To find happiness, he'll have to come to terms with his father's past and discover the kind of hero he really wants to be. So I tried Hero a few years ago, um, before I actually bought it. Um, I checked out of the library and didn't quite get on with it. Um, but I've been sort of obsessed with it ever since. So I went ahead and eventually bought it. And I am quite looking forward to finally uh, reading it. And hopefully it will, I will enjoy it and it will prove me wrong that um, writing uh, superhero fiction is rather difficult to do in novel form. Anyway, and finally, um, the final book I want to read, or the final book on my Pride TBR, is A Memory Called Empire by Arcady Martin. Um, I read this a few months ago for um, Thomas of, FF, of SF F180's um, Space Opera September. And I, rem and I quite liked it. Um, I had some issues with it, but I really quite liked it. Ambassador Mahit Desmare travels to the capital of the interstellar Texcalanli Empire, eager to take up her new post. She arrives only to discover that her predecessor has died, and no one will admit that his death was an accidental or that Mahit might be next. Now Mahit must discover who is behind the murder, rescue herself, and save her small but fiercely independent mining station from Tykeskalan's unceasing expansion, all while navigating an alien culture that is all too seductive, engaging in intrigues of her own, and hiding a deadly technological secret, one that might spell the end of her station and her way of life, or rescue it from annihilation. Definitely looking forward to rereading A Memory Called Empire. So that is my Pride TBR. Hopefully I'll be able to read most of them in June. And if not, I will continue on into July. Because honestly, really, one should be reading these books throughout the year. So anyway, um, thank you BookTube. I will see you tomorrow with... Um, the supermarket tag and until then thank you have a great afternoon and stay safe